Hey there, good afternoon and welcome to Prog Monster. My name is Murph, I am the host of this show, a show dedicated to progressive rock and other forms of rock music. So, we're here on our Monday night look back at a classic rock album, and basically we're here to talk about this album tonight, Uriah Heep's Salisbury, their second studio album, released in 1971 in... Uh, I believe it was June. I erased it with my finger when I put it down. <laughs> yeah, I think it was June. Anyways, in 71 at any rate. And recorded at the Lansdowne Studio in London. Uh, you, it, in the U.S. it was released on Mercury Label. In the U.K. it was released on Vertigo Label. And the rest of the world it was on Bronze and Islands Label. Um, produced by Jerry Braun and it's about 38 minutes or so in length now this particular CD collection of uh, the original has the original disc here which is the original album all six tracks and then on the second CD you get all six tracks plus two bonus tracks that were previously unreleased on the album because they wouldn't have fit you know in that time period they have 40 minutes was a push in it right 50 minutes would have been really pushing it. Um, however, there's also a live uh, version of Salisbury, I believe, on the second CD in this set. And this is a nice set. It's a an attractive album. As you see, he got it folds out really nice. A couple of really interesting things on here. I like this album a lot. Um, Featured on this album, David Byron on lead vocals, Mick Box on lead guitar and acoustic guitars, as well as backing vocals, Paul Newton on bass and backing vocals, uh, Ken Hensley on organ, piano, slide guitar and acoustic guitar, as well as harpsichord, vibraphone, and backing vocals. He does do lead vocals on two of the tracks, Lady in Black and High Priestess, on both of them. Um, and also Keith Baker on drums. So the funny thing about Uriah Heep is I really didn't get into them until fairly recently in the last year or so. I find them to be very similar to um, their their rise for me is very similar to Deep Purple. I didn't really like the sound of their music and a lot of it I think has to do with the Hammond organ on the albums. I find they're very similar range in a lot of things. And so it's kind of been a similar kind of uh, um, development for both bands over the different periods of time. But I've grown to really, really like this album a lot. Um, every track on it is good. Um, I haven't really listened too much to the bonus disc, but I'm sure that I'll like the tracks on that as well. Uh, just, just real quality stuff here. Um, this is a band that to my money should be much bigger than they are. They should be a household word, same as Deep Purple, you know, the way I look at it. So on this we have six tracks um, with uh, Byron doing lead vocals on Bird of Prey, The Park, Time, Time to Live, and the big epic long track, Salisbury. The other two tracks, Lady in Black and High Priestess, have Ken Hensley doing lead vocals. Now, Ken Hensley does write a, quite a bit of the material on the album. He is evolving to be the main guy at this point, uh, as far as uh, the writing part goes. So this is their second s studio album, and a big, a fairly big album for them. A lot of really good, solid stuff on this album. So I'm just going to move this over a little bit, because I put it behind the, the desk a little bit. It makes it hard to read it. Okay, so you... You have the opening track. Well, before we do that, let's just talk about the album. So you have a lot of really catchy kind of keyboard riffs, real catchy kind of guitar riffs throughout the whole song. Not just the song, throughout the whole album. Some really, really well done keyboard solos. Um, some really good guitar solos as well. The album. The songs have a lot of catchiness to them, like the real, you know, catchy beats to them. 
Uh, almost all the tracks are like that. Um, vocals are great. Um, I think that David Byron's high range vocals are like right up there, man. Like really operatic in sound. Um, Hensley's voices are more mainstream, more mid range, but no less catchy, no less uh, uh, desire to listen to them. You know, they're great. Uh, this band is fairly. Um, I didn't realize this about this band until I started listening to them. They have a lot of really catchy harmonies. They harmonize very well together, and some of the uh, the harmonies are really kind of they they start out at a low range and keep going up and going up and just really really catchy great sound to their vocals and to their harmonies the other thing about the band is they're fairly multi-talented i think the drummer is good mick box is of course is really good on guitar and i think hensley is very underrated keyboardist i did not know much about him prior to this album only knew of him but he's he's very good on this lots of atmospheric keyboards and synthesizers lots of soloing use of different keyboard instruments harpsichord organ piano all those things you know just really really strong on the keyboard part of it so um the first song bird of prey probably was the reason it took me a while to get in the album i didn't really catch on to this track very well so it was kind of a negative for me at first and so i wasn't as open to the rest of the album because of it it does have a heavy guitar rift byron's vocals were a little bit um difficult for me to grasp they're really high range i thought they were almost screechy in some parts and so i didn't really care for it at first um, but some very good harmony on this and that's what brought me back was the very thing that turned me off also brought me back which was their harmony vocals you know very good the next song the park um this is a great tune some nice hammond organ here with it's got kind of a forlorn kind of um sadness to this particular track at the beginning kind of almost purplish i hear a lot of deep purple here on this track um, it's got some beautiful falsetto vocals by um, Byron on this, which I wouldn't have appreciated early on, but I do now. Um, the harmony vocals, again, are really catchy, really, really nicely done. The acoustic guitar is, is also very catchy, the way he plays it, so great. And then there's a kind of... Um, catchy uh, bass part towards the end of the uh, song which I really quite like quite a bit too um, this was one of my favorite songs on the album the park the next song time to live heavy guitar drum and keyboard opening all banging off really well then you got uh, this guitar riff which is very kind of um, almost soloish I guess it's uh i'm not really sure how to say it um it's like a solo rift at the same time so a little bit of a bit i guess you might want to call it um, byron's vocals really catchy on this and just kind of scratchy at parts but just really really neat vocals on this the next song is a lee hen uh sorry ken hensley vocal part uh, much more mid mid range, but very emotional. On um, the opening on this is um, a very emotional, real catchy emotional sound to it. I just really like it. It's a song you can listen to in the dark and really get into. You know, um, the guitar riff and the drum support is also very catchy on this. And then there's some good harmony point uh, points on this song as well. Another one of my songs that I really liked a lot um the next is high priestess um yeah some some kind of uh it's got kind of a bit of a southern sound to it in parts of the song i almost visualize them playing in uh, in a in a kind of southern jamboree of music like jam music um 
the acoustic guitar and the electric guitar here are both really catchy he plays them kind of together now I I assume it's one guy playing one and the other one playing the other I'm not sure who's which because there's also some great keyboards mid-range on this some real catchy kind of uh, uh, yeah real catchy kind of keyboard parts but he his vocals are really strong on this as well uh, and it's Hensley again singing on this particular track I like the kind of slide uh, southern catchy sound to their music I think it's probably the slide guitar that gives it that kind of feeling yeah just a real catchy song um, I like that quite a bit too so then we get to the final track on the album which I think is the best track on the album um, not by much but I really like it's it's lengthy but there's a lot of real catchy stuff on this you got the heavy organ opening you got some heavy um, parts with the organ here too like really down crunchy stuff um, atmospheric with some real heavy catchy keyboard parts to it yeah just dominated by keyboards this particular song especially at the beginning uh, the vocals are off the charts I think Byron is at his best on this particular track um, you got some real kind of heavy bass parts as well and, and he's very frontal like you can hear him like he's really strong on the bass here I think the key the keyboard solos throughout this song are um, the best on the album as, as well as the guitar um, soloing parts that um, that uh, box does really really catchy stuff lots of them too so the kind of the whole song kind of moves along that way this is a classic lengthy prog song if you ask me um, definitely puts this band in the prog um, genre of, at least on this tune some of the other stuff has got some proggy elements too but there's also a lot of heavy heaviness to the album almost a heavy metal sound at, at times on the album as well really cla catchy album um, every single song has that catchy kind of rift that makes you want to get into the song you know it just really grabs you you know i think it's uh it took me a while to get into it but once i got into it i just one night was listening to it it'd been about the third or fourth time through for it it was in my playlist and then all of a sudden bang i thought wow this is great wow and then i just wanted to keep playing it but before that i was kind of took a bit to get past that little barrier so if you're one of those people that kind of thinks the way or kind of feels the way I do about music it might take a little bit to to get into it to just keep playing it it'll come through if you like this kind of stuff so there you have it there it is uh, Salisbury I thought it was Salisbury at first but then clearly the O that looks like an O was actually an A I didn't realize it till I opened it up and I looked and seen hey well it says Salisbury there then I went back and looked. I said, oh yeah, that's Salisbury. Because you can see it right here. It clearly says Salisbury. But I thought it was Salisbury because of the way the A looks on the front cover. But fantastic stuff. You can see that this album was released uh, towards the end of the... Uh, and in the time period towards the end of the... Sorry. Vietnam War. So a nice cover on there. Yeah, just really, really solid album. Uh, currently on my playlist. One of my favorite albums on that playlist. Definitely well worth, if you're going to get into Uriah Heap, I was recommended this album. So this is where I started, and I'm happy to say that this is great. Just a great album. So anyways, if you like this video please like and subscribe it's much appreciated you don't have to uh, excuse me I've got some indigestion for some reason I'm not sure where this is coming from but at any rate I hope you like this video and please subscribe it's much appreciated and we'll be back next Monday night with another look back at a classic rock album take care <laughs>